And welcome to another episode of the VD Clinic. Yeah, it is definitely time for a checkup. <laughs> there are viruses out there, um, all sorts of viruses. Uh, yes. Can I just say first and foremost, wash your hands, everybody, and that's what you need to do. Just don't touch your face. Okay, public service announcement out of the way. Don't cough on the elderly. It's mean. Don't buy up all the toilet paper. That's stupid. <laughs> and, you know, can I say something as just a guy that takes mass transit and has a four-year-old? Leave one of those little two-ounce spritzers of hand sanitizer. Yeah. Fucking nut jobs. <laughs> you made me panic. I was like, am I going to have to teach this kid all over again how to, like, bring a ladder with him to all the bathrooms to wash his hands? Oh, God. Anyway, yeah. Hey, I'm Vanessa, and that is Darren. Angry Dad Darren. Darren. But uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's out of my way now. <laughs> we had to get that public service announcement out of the way. Um, <laughs> don't listen to the president. We, Whatever he says, don't listen to yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. See what the other countries are doing. Wash your hands, vote, and wash your hands again. And don't touch your face. Yeah. Those are the big things. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> how are you doing, Darren? I'm doing all right. How about you? I am just dandy. Just had birthday celebrations, so. Many. <laughs> this year. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while, so that was kind of fun. There you go. But, Yeah. Even though I did the responsible thing on my birthday and had election training and um, recorded a podcast so and ran errands. So, yeah, I had a responsible day on my birthday. <laughs> I guess I earned the other, you know. Anyway. There you go. Yeah. But, yeah. Hard work, hard play. Exactly. So, Darren, um, what else has been going on? that you wanted to kind of to bring us to um, I mean, this is just a, a, an, a referral slip episode. You know, we're just giving you a few recommendations here. Um, but I know you had something from related to the news. Oh, is this uh, when we're uh, it, segue? <laughs> that was a bad yeah. segue. Is this about the sad passing or is this about the yes, thematic the movies? The sad bad, passing. The, the sad passing. Yeah, well, very recently, uh, unrelated to the pandemic, as far as we know, <laughs> Max von He was 90 years old. Yeah. I mean, he, he earned he, it. He, yeah, 90 <laughs> years old, but he, he was Swedish, so he had good health care. So he was probably fine that way. He was just old. Max von Sydow, or Sydow, or Sydow. 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 Die, well, but well, he also he died in France. They also have good health care. But um, so, yeah, he he died recently. And he, of course, I mean, The Exorcist is fucking awesome. And what? The Seventh Seal. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he's done. I think he's done. Uh, it's many over, in over 100. Huh? Many Ingmar Bergman films. Yeah, I, he he was in over a hundred and fifty different things. But yeah. I I just put together a little in in homage in in memoriam to Max von Sydow. The like everything that I thought of after I thought of Exorcist. <laughs> and things, I, <laughs> things I didn't see really really talked about yesterday. Now I'm sure some people 
will personally have thought of these too, but, you know, uh, going back, I think the first thing, and it, I wasn't immediately aware of it, but, you know, he did the voice of Vigo the Carpathian in Ghostbusters 2. Yes. Um, that That's one of the first scary voices from my childhood. Uh, <laughs> Not the best Ghostbusters movie. I think a lot of people just want the first one and to leave all the other ones in, you know, whatever. But that that was almost definitely my the first thing that I ever saw or heard. Uh, I guess I didn't see him in, but 1989, Vigo the Carpathian. Um, a few years later... I got to see Needful Things in the movie theater, and he was a really good devil. Uh, what, Leland Gaunt? I, I don't think we've really talked about Needful Things. Um, I don't, I barely remember that movie, oddly enough. Well, moving yeah. on. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that, that, I mean... What about Judge yeah. Dredd? Oh, yes, of course. How can you forget that? He was Judge Fargo and Judge Dredd. He was Arnold or er, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Stallone. <laughs> it was Stallone. Stallone's um, mentor, I guess you would say. Yeah. You know, he goes yes. off into the wasteland and mm -hmm. to I, be a geriatric Batman. Um, uh, something that's been covered on Psycho Semantic, he was director Burgess in the Minority Report. Ah. I don't know if I... we were recording yet when we were talking about you with all your monitors and stuff at work. Yeah. But, uh, that's, <laughs> it. <sighs> I don't, it's not my favorite Tom Cruise movie, but I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan, so it's right. Up there. And obviously, well, not obviously, but if you have heard me talk more than once or twice, I am more a fan of the short story than the movie. Uh, something that okay. we may sometime cover on the, here on the VD Clinic, but Citizen X. Um, did, what was that? Remind me what that was about, because that, I know I saw it, but, and that, I enjoyed it, but I don't remember what it was about. <laughs> that would fit well with our uh, March Madness theme, which we'll bring everybody back to Is, talk about later. That's, we saw that the one about Chikatilo? Yes, yes. Andre Chikatilo, the, the Russian serial killer? Yes. He was the oh, doctor wow. in that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I wrote down the name. I know we like to have me try to pronounce things in other languages, but he was Dr. Alexander Bukanovsky. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that was, and you don't play video games really, but he, he played a uh, mage or something like that in Skyrim. Um, but. I mean, he's in so he, he's probably <laughs> somewhere in his his catalog is so many people's favorite movies, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Although it's been a long time since I've seen The Exorcist, but I, I can imagine it's a, still a great movie. I don't, I don't know what you're. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. I, I love that so much. Yeah, I do love that movie a lot. Um and he is part of the reason, even though he's not really in it that much, truthfully. But his per her per his performance is, and just some of his facial expressions, and you know, com you know, combined with the lighting and different effects, of course. But just some of his facial expressions in that speak volumes, even though he doesn't have tons of dialogue. Yeah, and uh, he 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 what graduated from the Royal Theater in mm -hmm. um, 
Is it in Sweden? In Sweden. Yeah. In Sweden. Yeah, I I always enjoy him in um I yeah, I'm a big fan of his the the Ingmar Bergman films with him. Yeah. Uh, there are just certain directors and actors that work well together, and that is definitely one pair <laughs> that, <laughs> that did. Um, between, I mean, you mentioned the Seventh Seal, but like the Virgin Spring, yeah, um, yeah, a lot. Uh, so I think there were like seven or eight that they did together. But and he, yeah, and then he'd pop up in things like Judge Dredd, <laughs> yeah, the game. and you're like, wait. <laughs> Oh, he was um, Flash Gordon. How can you forget that? Oh, yeah. Uh, he was yeah. Ming. He was uh, Ming. You know, Three Days of the Condor, Doom. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, the, that's right. He's the Three-Eyed Raven in Game of Thrones. Um, so, you yeah. know, expansive career from all I understand, a wonderful guy. And... Yeah. So think okay. about what your favorite Max von Sydow movie is, dear listener, and give it a check. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, without knowing that it is 150 films but, or whatever, but it, it, it's, you know, there are just so many things where you think about just the number of things off the top of your head and you just know that there's a variety and something that basically can please anyone as far as the kind of movie, because I feel like, although I don't know, I don't, was he in any comedy work? I'm sure it wouldn't surprise me if he did. You know, he, he was in, doesn't Woody Allen say he makes comedies? Yeah. Or he was in Hannah and her sisters. Her sisters. That's right. That's right. Uh, no, uh, uh, more more dramatic stuff. Yeah, no, you're right, but it's still, um, as far as the types of drama, are still very are absolutely varied. Yeah, you know, and that I mean, I think that really shows his range as an actor. So so, here's you. Okay. Max cool. Sido. Yes. Exactly. Well, let's take a short break and we'll come back with a few things that I've had on my plate. Okay? Cool. Be back in a minute. Faye Ray. <laughs> Janet Lee. Adrian King. <coughs> Heather Langenkamp. <coughs> Amy Steele. <coughs> that weatherman who saw the cockroach. The oh my god, that is so oh my god! Jamie Lee Curtis. <coughs> and you. Come on. You know you wanna. Let her rip. <coughs> There. Now don't you feel better? You are now officially a Scream Queen. Come play with the rest of us at www.screamqueens.com. That's Queens with a Z. Or you could subscribe to us on iTunes. Either way, it's gonna be fucking fabulous. The Scream Queens Horror Podcast. It's where horror gets bent. Okay, we are back. Um, yeah, so while you've been thinking back on your Max von Sydow movies, um, I rewatched this past weekend Raising Arizona, and I had not seen that in so long, um, the Coen Brothers movie. And, I mean, just every actor in it is pretty, priceless every camera angle is just priceless it's 
I, you know, I just got where I was just laughing so hard and it was exactly what I needed. You know, I was looking, I had just seen, um, the Greek tragedy, um, Medea, where basically, you know, um, as played by, it was starring Rose Byrne and had, a Bobby Carnavali in it too. Um, but you know, Medea, like she basically tries to kill her husband and then she ends up killing his mistress and herself and the kids. So <laughs> wasn't it's her a, husband Hercules? Or did I make uh, that up? I forget what the or, his original name is in the but they modernized it for this. Yeah. Uh no, anyway, but I had just seen that, which, yeah, it was a great play, but, oh, it was heavy. So I needed something lighter, and I was watching Raising Arizona, and it just hit that sweet spot for me, just making me laugh hysterically. But it's also, there's some, as stupid as it is, in a way, like, a stupid comedy, like, it's also a smart comedy at the same time. And... I kind of love movies like that <laughs> where on the surface it, it just seems like it's okay. Pure slapstick. And there is an element of that in, in the movie bear, but there are these other things and, you know, just, I mean, the critique of normalcy is, is pretty hysterical <laughs> in and of itself when you stop and think about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and like I said, just the, the cast is is great. I mean, so um, I haven't. Yeah, I was gonna say I haven't been watching tons uh, of like I don't know movies or anything. Just you know, whatever documentaries. But um, so I've that's been why watching a lot of documentaries too. Yeah. So I, you know, so this was like the first time in a while that I had watched something that was just pure fun too so i kind of needed that um but anyway um but i've been reading a little bit more i had been reading a little bit more and i picked up i i went to a bookstore and picked up a couple things for my birthday and i proceeded i got this one graphic novel and i proceeded to read it within a day <laughs> because I just got caught up in it. And that book is, is called six days in Cincinnati, a graphic account of the riots that shook the nation a decade before black lives matter um, by Dan Moore. And this is actually about the uh, police brutality slash race riots that took place in April of 2001. And I was actually living there at the time. And I remember the entire city being under like curfew and everything. And really it wasn't as severe as the media made it out to be. And the politicians made it out to be. There were a lot of peaceful protests where the police retaliated and then people got pissed off more than anything else. Um, and it had been, the police had been doing a lot of, uh, the Cincinnati police had been doing, uh, I just, I mean, they were relentless as far as the way that they retaliated against protesters in that city. Um, yeah, there had been all these different economic conferences there the year before or environmental conferences the year before and, like the police had already gone after protesters and everything. And so when this incident happened in 2001, it was like yet another instance of the Cincinnati police department shooting an unarmed black man or just a black teenager in general. Yeah, so uh, he was what? 19. He was 19. Yeah. Timothy Thomas. And uh, it's a, it's a really, it's a quick, obviously it's a quick read. Um, it's not my favorite 
artwork ever. I will say that. But it portrays a lot of, I mean, it, it gives you a definite sense of emotion. You know? So yeah. even though it's not, and which to me is just as good as being technically excellent. I mean, because some people can be so perfect. Like my dad, he as his artistic abilities are, he is an amazing technical artist. He can draw, he can do scientific drawings and has had them published with the USDA and, um, and all these things like they've been, I don't know, they did this years ago and I think they still use them, but I mean, he is per, he's perfect at that, but yet you ask him to do a creative drawing, he can't do it, you know, and for me, I'm much more. I can do the creative <laughs> work. I my realism. I'm I'm not great. I'm not the best at realism. Surrealism, sure. Surrealism, yeah. <laughs> can it, or whatever, something else. But uh, yeah, I just have. Even though I've taken the classes and and studied technique, it's I know that's not my strength. Just like he knows what his strength isn't. You know, like that. But so that's what I'm saying with this book. It's, you know, again, not the most like technical, perfect artwork, but it's it's good at portraying the emotion. And that's what you need, especially surrounding a subject like this. Um, yeah. So that is latest thing i've been reading um 31 percent reporting he's ahead by 105,000 votes hmm. <laughs> bloomberg still got 18,000 why just why they're dumb down there is that Mississippi uh, or Michigan that is that, that dumb? That's Michigan. Oh, well, out there. Wrong geography on that statement. But well, I think you're still north of Michigan, aren't you? <coughs> um, Even, but part of Michigan's north of us. Oh, uh, okay. Although it depends on the part of New York. I'm talking New York City. Yeah, where like where you are. Yeah, where I am. No, because... Uh, like I went to Grand Rapids a couple of years ago and is a little farther north than us, but not a lot. Yeah. Anyway. Ooh, yeah. Well, Mississippi Biden's winning by, uh, 81 to 14%. Oh, wow. Well, they do hate Jews down there. Sorry. It's kind of, it's kind of true. It's your old region. I just I know, don't know what I the know the pe I know the people. I know the people. And also he's much, you know, they want someone more conservative yeah. if they're going to get a democrat. I mean, he he got They like their democrats pretty conservative down there. <laughs> right? I mean, he in Michigan he got the endorsement of some big Republican uh, mayor. Uh, and also, what, 2018, he helped campaign for a Republican I know. congressperson. I know. Exactly. But, you know. <laughs> anyway. He's, he's yelling at people and shit, but he's the guy for unity, right? Mm, anyway. Not this show. Not right now. <laughs> okay, let's wrap up this circus i just have a couple quick things cool. and then we'll be finished okay um sorry we had to take a quick break there i had to clear my throat um anyway just up exactly i can't do the bismarcky <clears throat> right now um uh, no i don't have the virus folks i just it's still kind of winter 
you know, as far as the temperature in the building. That's all. Dries your throat out. Anyway, so um, my last two recommendations are actually a couple of podcasts. And I was fun to bring these up because to go along with our March theme of March Madness, uh, I, I, you know, I thought I'd throw out a, a few true crime kind of recommendations. And one is the, the real crime profile. And it's, I, I think I may have talked about part of like an episode or something another ep one on another one of these be before but um but they it's the hosts are one uh is jim clemente who's uh, was an fbi profiler and he'd been a prosecutor i think at one point and then there is laura richards who was a profiler and anyway jim clemente also like wrote on Criminal Minds, the TV show, for a while. And the third, like their third uh, co-host, she's also, she works with the show Criminal Minds, too. But it's interesting. Um, okay, and we're back. Um, another interruption from Zora. Thank you. Um, as I was saying, so this... Um, uh, podcast real crime profile it goes more into because you have a couple profilers uh, on there you, it actually gets into some of the more nitty gritty of certain cases and the way what they do a lot of times is they look at cases that have been portrayed uh, on different programs in the media like they did they did one on um, the Keepers, that Netflix series. They did one on the the recent series. Um, oh, what is that? The the Aaron Hernandez documentary on uh, Netflix. Have you seen that? Which documentary? About Aaron Hernandez, the football player. Oh yes, who, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't remember I can't the exact remember name what of it's it. Called, but yeah. Yeah, but so they like have covered that one, but they and but and they've gone through these different things, and they're actually they did a whole thing on Oscar Pistorius, Oscar Pistorius, and then like Amanda Knox and the West Memphis Three. Is Pistorius the one that shot the woman in the shower? His girlfriend, yeah. Okay. In, in the um, while she was in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um. But anyway, so it's and it's really interesting because also they the um like I said they have the insight more because of the professions that they you know their backgrounds that they come from, but they also don't like glorify the people who committed these crimes. You know they'll I mean they really don't a lot of times say the killer's names or, you know, they'll be talking about, they, they speak more in terms of the victim's name or the survivor's name. Okay. Uh, and so it's kind of an interesting mindset in the fact, in, in the fact that they do that. Um, they did a whole thing examining like Jerry Sandusky and his, you know, and Jeffrey Epstein and all, you know, all these different, people in, you know, cases that have been, they're doing, they're doing, um, their current one is about Bill Cosby. Uh, cause they're talking about this other podcast, uh, that covers all the Bill Cosby stuff. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's a, it, it's kind of an interesting thing if you want to get into some of more nitty gritty, I would say, because I mean, as much as I like some of the other, you know, true crime podcasts out there, but you know, the, there are plenty of them that mix a fair amount of dark comedy. Is that on your and my end? 
I heard it in in my earbud. But it sounds like Zora is right there. I was going to say maybe they knocked something over somewhere? Unless, uh, I don't know. Is the recycling settling? Maybe it had been partially... Maybe it was tipping on its edge and it hadn't fully knocked over. It's in your house, whatever it is. Well, it doesn't... The cops will get it. They're coming. Yeah, the cops will get it. Okay. Uh, killer inside anyway. the mind of Aaron Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you. The killer inside. So, um, anyway... Yeah, so, I mean, I I don't, you know, there's there are plenty out there that, that do have, like, do mix these true crime type things with, like, dark comedy. And I'm fine with that, and I like some of them, but also you, you don't want that necessarily all the time if, you know, if you're really into true crime, <laughs> I feel. You know, and, and like I said, the fact that they don't glorify the killers... They're much more about remembering, you know, and, you know, putting in a, you know, they're much more, much more about the victims or survivors, you know, and telling their stories Okay. and remembering the, and remembering them, you know, and it's true because I mean, one thing that they point out is like when they talk about the Amanda Knox case, they're like, we all remember Amanda Knox's name, but do we remember who was murdered? You know, which was Meredith Kirchner. But so many people don't even remember that because of the way the media played it up. Yeah. You know, and granted, Amanda Knox ended up wrongfully convicted, but there's, you know, and that's why it is part, it's important to tell her story too. You know, she was a victim in this as well but you know and and in that whole what their coverage that, like that they did of that they, you know they are pointing out that here you know whatever i'm not going to go into this whole case this specifics of this case but it's kind of like they go into specifics of the case and you know it's still pretty concise um you know you don't feel totally overwhelmed by it but, um, so yeah, uh, I think that's probably, we can wrap it up there, but I mean, I could talk about more true crime podcasts. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, you know, I do want to mention actually one last, one last one The um, the, we saw the devil podcast. Are you familiar with that? Uh, it sounds familiar, but it's not something I regularly listen to. The women who did the um, all uh, all horror podcast uh, are just uh, started doing a true crime podcast, and it's it's very interesting. And like they're doing some real coverage of like different like breaking stories. And, you know, are actually going to be tra traveling to a trial and things like that. So, I mean, and it's just something they're into. Um, you know, and sure, they'll add a few snarky comments, but it's, they're much more still about, let's talk about this story in a constructive manner, you know, and let's tell the facts of what's going on. So... I just thought I'd bring that up because they, you know, they're, they're pretty new and it, I'm enjoying it so far. Right on. Yep. So in keeping with the March madness theme, that is our March theme as usual. Darren, you want to tell everybody what we are covering this year? Yes, we will. Um, I believe. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I just didn't want to have the not complete title of the book. So, <laughs> uh, but we are doing the Spike Lee movie, The Summer of Sam. 
uh, about New York in the 70s uh, based around the time of the Son of Sam slash 44 caliber killer shootings. And we are doing Mind Hunter by John E. Douglas and Mark Olshaker. The book, that the is. The book, yeah. Yeah. They didn't write the show, as far as I know. No. 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 And we should yeah. have a special guest. I spoke with yes. them a week or so ago. Yes. <laughs> About that, yes. just to yes. check in. But, you know, until it's done, you never know what's going to happen. Yep. Wash your hands. Yes, and cover it, and don't touch your face. Yep. Like cough, cough into your elbow. Yes. Uh, don't stock up on toilet paper like maniacs. Like, <laughs> I mean, you still obviously need toilet paper, but. <laughs> but, but I mean, as far as I know, the don't hoard it. Does not don't... give you diarrhea. Yeah, like I said, it's not like this is mass dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called COVID-19 because it was discovered in 2019. So uh, that is part of the uh, not every election year has a manufactured virus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But but the viral outbreak movies are good. Watch those. The channel channel your panic into those you know, 12 monkeys <laughs> and and stuff like that but um until next time i yes. have been darren and i'm vanessa bye bye thank you for listening to another episode of the vd clinic if you'd like to get in touch with us you can find us at twitter at vd clinic pod or reach us via email at vdclinicpod at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook group, VD Clinic Podcast. We'd love to hear your feedback, suggestions, and more.